Uh, my name is Ryan Swift. I am uh, the coordinator for the LED Talks this year. Um, and this is one of my favorite events of all time. And I am happy to be sitting next to one of the organizers and founders of this event, Ms. Tina Morales Armstrong. Hello, everybody. I'm Tina. I've been an uh, event director for various events, including ILHC, ILHC, our 10th year, woo woo. And um, Lindy Fest for the last woo on and off. <laughs> I think I did it for, uh, yeah, I did it on and off for probably about eight years, eight or nine years, back to 1998. And also Swing and Soul in Atlanta and um, International Swing Dance Championships there. So, yes, I like doing events. Tina likes doing events. <laughs> and she does not like, uh, like being uh, in front of the camera or microphone. So this is, a, this is a treat. <laughs> and uh, I'm very, very happy she's going to be co-moderating this panel with me today. Um, what we're going to be doing, this is going to be a little bit different than what we've done at LED Talks in the past. Uh, we wanted to give the opportunity to shed a spotlight on some of the uh, recipients of the Frankie Manning Foundation Ambassador Scholarship. Tina has been involved with the Frankie Manning Foundation. Um, and uh, we would just like to talk to uh, some of the ambassadors um, and just get a little bit of their story and see how uh, receiving that scholarship has impacted their lives, impacted their dancing, and uh, just talk to them about what it means to be an ambassador of Lindy Hop, an official ambassador of Lindy Hop. Um, and since we are at ILHC and everyone here is very dedicated to the dance, um, there are a lot of folks that are competing right now. <laughs> Um, off and on. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this a little bit of uh, a Tonight Show style and uh, we're going to have folks come in and out as they are competing and not competing. Um, and uh, I think everyone will have a little bit of an opportunity to just talk about who they are and how, uh, how the, what the Frankie Manning uh, Foundation means to them and what Frankie Manning means to them. So um, Tina's going to be doing all the talking. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> um, but what, what we're going to do first, um, before we get to some of our guests, um, is, Tina, I would like for you, if you would be so kind, to just talk a little bit about uh, what the Frankie Manning Foundation is and uh, what the ambassador program, uh, what the intent of the ambassador program was at its beginning, because I think you were around for some of that. Yes, uh, I was around for the beginning of it. So in the in the beginning, we um, started with the Frankie Manning, Frankie Manning 95 birthday celebration. And so I was an organizer of that event along with Buddy Steves, who's sitting right here, um, Elliot Donnelly and David Jacoby from New York. And because there was proceeds and a margin from that event, we were like, OK, what are we going to do with this money? you know, put it back in the community, and that's how um, the Frankie Manning Foundation started. And then from that, um, one of the things that Frankie wanted was for, um, to see uh, uh, a reemergence, <laughs> a resurgence of uh, blacks in Lindy Hop. And so um, with that, the Frankie Manning Ambassador Program started. And so um, I've had the privilege at the beginning of doing some reviews of some of the applicants, and so I've been involved in some of the process from the beginning. Not so much anymore, but, um, but that's how it started. And so I do know several of the members, and it's a great program. It is a great program, and we are happy to have you here talking about it a little bit and to talk to some of the recipients' ambassadors. Um, and we are joined right now at the moment by two of them, um, one of whom is going to be running away to a competition in just a few minutes. So I'd like to talk to you first, and then we're going get to get to the person on your right in a second. Um, but why don't you introduce yourself and speak into the microphone and tell us who you are and where you are from. Hello, my name is Joshua McLean. I'm from Seattle, Washington in the United States. Awesome, thank you. So uh, I'm going to take this one, oh, Tina. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll start, and then you, you can grill Sammy in a second. But okay. do you prefer Joshua or Josh? Uh, I prefer either. I turned 21 and people started calling me by my uh, full name. Full name? You're not so. Joshy anymore? No, no okay. Joshy. <laughs> Joshy started when I, stopped when I was 12. <laughs> okay, that's fair. So uh, I'll go with Joshua, full name. What, um, when did you uh, apply and receive the Frankie Manning uh, Ambassador, Frankie Manning Foundation Ambassador Scholarship? All right, I applied in the 
fall of 2014 for the 2015 scholarship. And I had no idea that the Frankie Manning Foundation existed into, until uh, Mark Kihara and Peter Flayef uh, back home in Seattle when they were both there at that time. Uh, they told me, hey, have you heard about the Frankie Manning Foundation? Um, we see that you're really excited about Lindy Hop, um, and we think that would be something that this foundation, the program they offer, would be really good for you. Um, and so I uh, checked it out, and they sent in my, uh, uh, I sent in my application with their recommendation letters. And how did you, had you been dancing for a long time? Uh, at that point, I had been dancing for a year. Uh, I started dancing in high school um, uh, in 2013. I had dabbled in it briefly just before, um, but then I, I felt really awkward <laughs> uh, doing it, but then I just kept on coming back, and so I have been dancing for a year, um, and yeah. And ooh, I just bit the microphone, sorry about that. What, um, how, did, how did you use the scholarship? What, what did you apply that towards? Um, so when I was in my high school, we were working with, uh, we had our program, uh, uh, it was the Emmons Woodway High School Swing Club, and out of that we had another program that we just made a name for and said it was a thing called Swing Ovation. Um, and what we were doing is we were going around to other high schools um, and other middle schools and offering to re uh, some of us uh, had open periods, so we, we had schools nearby, and we would teach uh, swing dance classes either as an after-school uh, activity or in place of their, uh, a school's PE class for a, a series of weeks. Um, and so we did that, and out of that, in Seattle, we, uh, at each of these schools, other swing dance clubs started, and, um, and then eventually we were all going to the Century Ballroom, going to Eastside Stomp in Kirkland, and uh, in the, between uh, 2013 uh, uh, to about 2015, like the youth population that were at the dances, the all age dances, was, it was huge. Uh, and you knew it was super huge when it was the following Monday on the Sunday night, there was no school because there would be a line down the stairs and outside the door and then people would be leaving the ballroom and that was your chance to go back in because the ballroom's at capacity because there's just so many kids there. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, so what would you say, uh, being an ambassador, what, does, what did Frankie mean to you specifically? Mm. It's a question I've thought of a lot because I never had the opportunity to meet Frankie um, and a lot of people ask me, um, because I don't know if they assume that I've already met him or, mm -hmm. or not, and I tell them, it's like, no, I, I haven't. Like, all I've had is I've uh, listened to people who have come before me, their stories about Frankie, and I, uh, I will watch him dance, and I will watch him talk. And Frankie went, things that I know he said that uh, are left with me is, uh, he would, he would say it's a hell of a feeling to dance heavenly. And I think that that is just so beautiful. Um, and so when I know that when I'm dancing and I, and I think about Frankie or I'm doing a step that I know he did, I'm thinking is like, what, 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 it, like, what is that feeling? And sometimes I, I frequently chase this uh, feeling of what, what, was, what was going through his head um, when, when Frankie was dancing. And it's like, uh, and my way of finding that has been, you know, doing his steps and um, enjoying the music and, and trying to live up to those things that he left for us mm -hmm. to listen to the music, to look at our partners and enjoy them and, and be with them in that moment um, and let that be our focus and everything else comes second to that. Um, and so that when, that's what I, I think of. Uh, I think you almost answered sort of my next question, yeah. but, but maybe if you have anything else you want to expound upon mm -hmm. that, but like what was, to you, what was Frankie's legacy? Uh, Lindy Hop, swing dancing itself, that's all Frankie's legacy. To be an ambassador, to be uh, 
selfless in your sharing, uh, in your combined experience of the dance with others. I think that was his legacy to, to spread um, this love and joy for uh, jazz music and the culture that powered it. Um, and, and, and to, to love each other. I believe those are, those are things that were Frankie's legacy. Yeah, I think that's yeah. very, very good. And so to carry on his legacy, um, what are the things that you're doing to carry on Frankie's legacy? To carry on Frankie's legacy, um, so I'm currently working on uh, a couple different projects. Um, one of them is back home in Seattle, uh, some friends and I, we, um, we started, uh, we're j it's five of us, we're all African Americans who dance Lindy Hop, we're all black folks. Um, and we have started a community for ourselves. And what, one of the things that we're exploring right now is the way that we are teaching and engaging in Lindy Hop. Um, and uh, this is my opinion, so I'm not saying that if you see it other, other than this, that's fine. I feel like in our classes and stuff like that, we will teach moves, we will teach concepts, and, this, and at no point am I saying that the teachers that are doing this are wrong. I think it's great. But there's also a culture behind all of this dancing. And it's like, there's reason why these dancers did these particular movements. You know, there's a reason why um, these, some movements have these names and trying to discover through learning about history and uh, uh, the times uh, during uh, Lindy Hop's uh, heyday. Uh, we're trying to craft what we would think would be a cultural approach to teaching a dance. So also learning steps and moves, concepts, connections, how to perform and all of those things, but also learning more about the culture behind it. And as black dancers, that I feel that's very important. Um, recently at my next project, recently at Harang, uh, I taught with Angela Andrew from East London and um, uh, drew conversations with her um, and uh, Sarah Deckard, and uh, she hasn't gotten back to me uh, yet, but uh, Margaret Batachak, I'm hoping to get in contact with her as well. Uh, I wanted she's to find here this out. weekend. Oh, she's here this weekend. Yes. Yeah, I'll make Can sure you, you guys get. Me? I'll okay, make sure you guys please. get together. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. I try. I was I was given an email and I sent. An email. I'll make sure you guys know. get introduced. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out because, on one hand, I love Frankie. Frankie was beautiful and represented something that's very important. And I'm, I'm also thinking, what were the follows doing? Like I I don't really and I also know that it's hard because when you watch the videos, sometimes you can't always see their feet. But like what I want to be, like I, want, I would love to be able to get a little bit inside of Norma's brain if she will show me steps <laughs> sometimes. Um, I would love to be able to um, uh, get inside um, the, some of the, the uh, what's the name I'm looking for, the Whitakers. I would love to be able to get inside uh, their heads. And I was able to talk with Barbara and Sugar, but I think it's also really important for- We will also be here this weekend. Yes. <laughs> I, heard, I, I talked to them in a harangue, but I could still pick their brains some more. Um, but that's been my project for the past couple of months is going to either directly to people like Norma Miller, Sugar Sullivan, Barbara Billups, and asking them and, and uh, just to share their stories with me and how they feel about the dance and also their tech takes on steps because I think that's really important for people who want to follow or uh, women who want to follow or b dance any of these roles in the dance, in, including solo dancing, to, to have that reference of other women who came before them and other followers who came before them, and for us not to lose that. I, I know when I go to teach a private lesson, you, know, I, you give me a, a leader coming to a private lesson, I'm like, okay, let's go. I get a follower, I'm like, I can tell you what I feel, but I don't <laughs> feel comfortable telling you what to do because I don't know what you're doing and I don't know what you're supposed to be doing. And so I need to learn what that is to be a more effective teacher for you. So I need to, that's one of my projects is to find out more about what the followers are doing. 
That is amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Josh, you have to run to a yes, contest. So we're going to let you go. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you. People find him for the rest of the weekend yeah. and, and talk to Joshua about following or leading and all of these other things. I will, and I'm, I, I talk about I'm going to make day. sure that we get you together <laughs> with Margaret. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. <laughs> all right. So our, our next guest, uh, who is sitting patiently, is a fellow New Yorker. His name is Samuel Coleman. Everybody, please welcome Sammy. Sammy, why don't you, uh, while we get started, uh, and Latasha sneaks in, we're going to get her up there in a second. Um, actually, you know what? You have, Latasha, you've got a time limit. Yeah. Why don't we start with Latasha? Sammy, I'm going to bump you. <laughs> I'm going to bump you, and I apologize. <laughs> we're going to call an audible. <laughs> Latasha Barnes is here Hello. from Washington, D.C. Everybody, please welcome Yay, Latasha. Hey, Latasha. Uh, we just had Josh in here, uh, and he just ran out to take a contest and uh, or participate in a contest, and you're going to be doing that in just a short short minute. So I would like to do the same thing that we just did with Joshua, which is why don't you tell us who you are, where you're from, and maybe how you discovered Lindy Hop. Oh. And you use a microphone, okay. and is you can okay? keep it brief, because we did a whole two hours talking about this on, yes, on a podcast. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Latasha Barnes, uh, originally from Richmond, Virginia. And I'm 37. <laughs> I originally discovered Lindy Hop through my great-grandmother. Um, I didn't know it was Lindy Hop then. She was just tossing me around the living room, which I thought was fun. Um, but in this current iteration, I came to it through a friend who was seeking uh, dance instruction for a style of music that he enjoyed playing, Jeff Booth. And he introduced us to urban artistry, being to us, uh, to some of the solo jazz movement that he felt was familiar and similar to a lot of the urban dance movement that we were doing. And in an effort to have a more authentic and clearer understanding of the movement that was borrowed from jazz that was in-house dance and some other styles of dance, I said, oh, I should probably come learn more about this and like experience it and see what's going on in this Lindy thing. <laughs> and that was 2013, and I kind of got swung over. Uh -huh. <laughs> Awesome. So well, the, the next question that we're asking folks is, this is you know, focused on the Frankie Manning Foundation ambassadors. Um, how did you come to uh, discover and ultimately receive uh, the scholarship for uh, the ambassador program? So my first IHC, my first full IHC was 2013. And my friend Bobby White, who was uh, sharing solo jazz movement with me, he introduced me to a lot of the people that he knew. And one of them was Miss Mandy Gould. And she was in the throes of planning a really, really powerful event, Frankie 100. <laughs> and um, it was, like I said, I think it was ILHC 2013. And her advice to me was like, oh, well, if you're really interested in learning more about the dance, like you really should apply for the foundation scholarship. Like we're really working to get more African Americans back into the dance. And you know, with your dance background, this probably was something that could really benefit you. So I applied. And that was my first ambassadorship with the Frankie Manning Foundation was attending Frankie 100. Awesome. And so, and how have you used your scholarship since that time? Since that time, I have, or how do you use it? <laughs> I've done my best to bring more of the urban dance community into uh, the Lindy community. And I've been moderately successful at that. I think I can maybe do a little bit more, maybe push them a little bit more. <laughs> um, and also, my proudest project is uh, the one that we're about to do tonight. Um, that's getting more of the African-American dancers, Frankie Manning ambassadors, and those who are also um, not Frankie Manning ambassadors, uh, performing together as an homage to Whitey's Lindy Hoppers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty excited about that <laughs> one. Um, and so what would you say, and we're asking everyone this question, what do you, what, what do you say that Frankie means to you? Frankie? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Honestly, with everything that I, because unfortunately I never got to meet him myself. Yeah. Uh, but with all of the stories I've heard and with definitely speaking with, with Judith and Norma and, and Chaz, I have come to understand that a lot of what he did was very intentional. And so for me, his meaning to me is clarity through joy. So it, it's clearly stating and showcasing to the world who you are and what you stand for through the things that you can share. So yeah. that's through dance, through conversation, through art pieces through like collaborative performances, like all of that, like he, he definitely, for me, he symbolizes clarity, like in, intent and purpose and, and just sharing who you are. 
Yeah. And so, so with what you've learned and, and through the um, Brinke Manning Foundation and your ambassadorship, how do you plan on carrying on his legacy? And um, what, do you, what do you intend to do? Well, one of the things that I'm currently doing, which like we talked at, in depth about uh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. I'm very honored to be teaching and sharing this dance uh, around the world. And I make it a point to teach the way they talk. <laughs> and to try to bring a little bit more of the social learning atmosphere back into the learning process to get a little bit more of a community sense of the dance established, not just a hierarchy as, you know, it's sometimes perpetuated with the competitions and things, but just this sense of community, like, oh, I learned this step from this group of people, oh, I learned this step from this group of people, and coming together and exchanging those things, jamming together. Mm -hmm. Like, jam circles don't have to just be the entire ballroom floor. Like, you can have these moments and share the things that you know and continue to drive this dance forward and to drive the creativity that sparked it in the first place. So that's my hope. <laughs> I mean, it seems like you're taking on a lot of, um, and I think a lot of, <laughs> they're very excited too. Uh, you're taking on a lot of responsibility and I think a lot of the ambassadors uh, seem to be carrying that. Do you feel that there's a lot of pressure as a Frankie Manning ambassador to live up to his name or to, to, to bring on a message or is it a different kind of feeling for you? I think initially there was a little bit of that, um, but that was before I fully understood the possibilities of what an ambassadorship could mean. Like, I, I think there was a misconception that you just automatically got to do things if you're an ambassador, but it's not just you automatically get to do things. It's, it, it is a bit of a responsibility because mm -hmm. from being, from the originating community, if you so choose to take up that mantle to make sure that who we are as a people and who we were as a people is continued to be understood and respected as the dance progresses and moves forward. So it can be pressure filled, but if that's something that you're used to dealing with your entire life, then <laughs> no. <laughs> but just putting it into perspective that that was something that's necessary. Like that, yeah. 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 So, um, well, there was one thing I wanted to ask. Uh, so in this and becoming an ambassador, have you, and in dealing with sort of the pressures of being an ambassador, have you experienced anything negative, any sort of a negative side of being an ambassador? Is there, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of positives, but there are also, I'd just like to know as well. Um, I think the, the one thing that could have been, I guess the most glaringly negative uh, I ended up being able to, I think that was one of those moments when I really harnessed like the power of the ambassadorship. And it was a particular blackface incident and uh, context, context incident that happened at Harang. And instead of just shrinking back and being angry about it, I, I took up that, like I'm uh, an ambassador. Like you guys have been doing this for a long time. This is not okay. You, you guys know this should be different by now. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that we continue to speak up when when there are things that are starkly just completely inappropriate or mm -hmm. out of context or being, I don't want to say, yeah, that are misleading as far as like how the dance was should be perpetuated, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and so with this team that you have, so t talk to me more about the team, <laughs> what you're doing, and and uh, where you see the direction of this going, and uh, and experiences with them. So the project we're calling it is Black, Brown, and Beige for obvious reasons. <laughs> There's many different shades of us. And um, it honestly just sparked from the past, my past two ILATs, like my first one and then last year. Um, and so many African-American dancers and other dancers of color came to me and were like, oh yeah, it'd be so cool if we could all like hang out. Oh, it'd be also cool if we could all do a thing. Oh, at the dance tonight, we should all get together and do a jam circle because some of us have different dance backgrounds. It's like, okay, well, let's see if we can play with this style of dance to swing music. Let's see if we can do this thing. And ultimately, when it was announced this year that there was gonna be the solo team division, like a light bulb exploded over my head and I was just like, all of you guys said we should do a thing. Let's do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's do it at ILHC. I know we're all spread out and all over the place, but like, I think we can make this happen. I know it'll be a push and it might be stressful, but I think it's something that we really should do. And then with Norma, <laughs> giving the charge of perpetuating her choreography that she re-unveiled at Harang last year, was like, what better way to honor her and mm -hmm. the rest of our elders and 
to jam out the way that they did. Awesome. What's that experience been like? It's been interesting. <laughs> because like I said, we have very different levels of dancers. Some are also professionals. Some are professional educators, but not professional performers. And some are just so excited about doing it that they're pushing themselves to be everything that they can be in this moment. So it's been absolutely beautiful and motivating. And like you, you want to get nervous, but at the same time, it's just such an honor and a humbling experience to throw down with everybody that it's just, it's just too, it's too exciting to be <laughs> wholly how, nervous. How many people are a part? And is it, is it so a part of the in, or is a it? part of the entire project right now? There are 25 of us. Um, so there's going to be more things to do because not everybody was able to make it to ILHC. Uh, but in this particular iteration, there are 10 of us that are going to be on the team on the floor. And so you're, you're, you have um, aspirations after ILHC. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Before you go, do you want to share any of those, or do you want to keep that close to the vest? Oh, yeah. I mean, we don't have anything set just yet. Um, I, you have I big, know. Big dreams? Yeah, like performances at Lindy Fest. <laughs> if only you knew somebody uh, yeah. that, could, that could maybe get you in at Lindy Fest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then other. I think uh, that's a done deal. And I, and, I guess, <laughs> and I guess by saying this on camera, I'm kind of holding us to this. Yeah. This was a. a private conversation that we have, but yeah. one of my other aspirations is that I'm doing a lot in the preservation of urban dance forms, period. Yeah. And that's a mission that I'm carrying over from my parent organization, Urban Artistry. And I had the honor to work again with a, a group called um, Ladies of Hip Hop. And I'm very desirous to have a Ladies of Jazz event and symposium. Wow. Yeah. Yes. That'd be awesome. Yes. And Weird. you'll do that in New York? Yes. Since you moved to New York? <laughs> My soon to be new home. <laughs> new home. <laughs> new home. We'll All right. See. Latasha, thank you. you have to run to a contest because this <laughs> Good is what luck. we do. Thanks. So thank you, Latasha. Everybody, please thank Latasha. And now, speaking of New York, the ever patient and wonderful, please welcome one more time Sammy Coleman. So, Sammy, now, before we were so rudely interrupted by Latasha and her very tight schedule. <laughs> Uh, could you tell the folks who you are, which I just said, and where you're from, which I just said, but also maybe give a little bit of history of, of your history with Lindy Hop? Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, my very first teacher was Laura Jeffers, oh, Laura. who is the director of the Big Apple Lindy Hoppers, yes. who um, Seen her a long time. is a group that I now belong to. Um, since uh, studying with Laura. What's interesting is that uh, where I first took a lesson with Laura was at the Ailey School, which is the home of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, where I graduated from, and now I work full time. <laughs> and it's my day job. Um, they started a, a, about 10 years back, they had started a, uh, a, uh, adult, a, a adult program or classes for the community. And what I mean by that was uh, basically uh, the school trains professionals, mm -hmm. uh, children, and then also we have a college program for kids that are um, going to go out and do this as a career. Um, but they started a, a program since they had a new building for classes for the community. Um, with that, they brought in other dance forms that they had never had before. So they brought in a, a Lindy Hop teacher, they brought in a salsa teacher, and then they brought in a tango. They were doing tango. So I, uh, uh, Lindy Hop was something that I saw on old clips um, from my love of, of, of jazz music and, mm -hmm. and just dance in general. But I had no idea people were doing that. <laughs> yeah. I like, like I totally, you know, had been in, New, you know, I, I'm a New Yorker. I had no idea that people were, it was, that it was a thing happening around me. It was, and so through uh, taking my first uh, class, um, with Laura, it, it opened up a whole, a whole nother world okay. that I started to, little by little, find out that was happening around me that was pretty much underground. Yeah. 
because uh, here I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a part of, of, of a dance community and uh, I just didn't know people were doing that. Yeah, how, how did you come to receive the Frankie Bannon ambassador? Oh, uh, so, um, so after, uh, after some time, this is years later, um, because also the classes at Ailey didn't last long. Oh, okay. And it was bas basically uh, Those they, were they the dropped, classes with Laurel? Yes. Okay. They dropped uh, Lindy and they dropped Tango. Salsa was the only thing that <laughs> lasted and, and it's still going on. <laughs> Who fig go, go, go figure. Go figure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's everywhere, you know. So, um, so but what, what happened is that, once again, I discovered a whole other world that uh, was happening behind me. So... Where was my next home? Dance Manhattan. Oh, okay. Who I'm still uh, yeah. grieving uh, that, that they're gone. But um, so then I started to, to go out to these other places that were, you know, were teaching uh, um, Lindy. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I was able to catch um, Sandra Cameroons before they closed. Mm -hmm. Then I went to, to Dance Manhattan afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, and through uh, my, my friends, that was taking class with me and also uh, teachers uh, at um, on Dance Manhattan, Nathan, uh, Avita, Michael, those people were the ones that told me about uh, the, the scholarship. Okay. And, uh, and um, they thought I would be interested and yeah, you know, yeah, I was like <laughs> totally interested and, yeah. and uh, you know, I applied for it. Well, the, the Big Apple Lindy Hoppers were, were part of Frankie's legacy um, yes. Were you uh, aware of that, that that was um, yes. in his history with yes. the Big Apple, Lindy Hoppers? Yes, which is why it's, it's such an honor to, to uh, you know, for me to, you know, work with the group now and to yeah. be under, you know, tra training with Laura. Yeah. Um, you know, she just has, she has a wealth of knowledge and like literally all of the uh, New Yorkers and, you know, and many of the teachers, um, you know, in New York have worked with Laura at, at some point, have went through, through that company. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great honor, um, you know, to be working with her. Yeah. And just one of the greatest human beings on the planet. Laura yes, Jeffers. yes, yes. She is. yes. I, just, she is. I just have I to say that every time I hear her name. very long <laughs> time. Well, you probably used to yeah. see her. Not as much as I'd like, but yeah. she's yeah. wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so speaking of, um, speaking of Frankie's legacy, yeah. In addition to um, you're carrying on as one of the big Apple Lindy Hoppers, and I see you guys perform, and you're doing his original choreography. But you know the the question that Tina asked um, uh, Joshua and uh, Latasha, like, how do you feel that you're carrying on Frankie's legacy yourself? Um, so uh, what happened is that uh, I w I'm actually was the first group of people that uh, um, got their scholarship. And I kind of like to say we were like the guinea pigs. <laughs> um, I, I think at that time, they didn't know, you know, how, you know, what they would do with um, this idea. And so um, I got an opportunity to, to go um, for, with the scholarship, I got a chance to go to Harang. And um, at Harang, uh, it was about, six people that got to go um, that year. So it was uh, um, you know, me from New York, it was uh, someone from um, Oakland, Jamin, yes. uh, someone from Texas, Jerry, Jerry Floyd, a yes. person from, uh, um, oh, I said, I said uh, Jamin was from Oakland, no, uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. But there was um, a, there was a yeah, lady uh, from, there was a lady yeah. from Oakland. I remember looking yeah, at the Tracy tape. Tracy was from Tracy, Oakland. Tracy, yes, yeah. that's right. And then two people uh, from uh, Brazil, uh, Luis and Denise. Yeah. So we were the, the first group and um, it was just such an honor. And uh, for me, what it gave me uh, was a world view of this dance, not just a, a, a local, mm -hmm. you know, so. Do you think you, in the, you, and when you started, you sort of had this New York sort of perception of what Lindy Hop was and our? Yeah, I actually, to be honest, I had never been anywhere uh, besides just my local, uh, uh, local uh, uh, social dance school. So, like I said, this, you know, for me, 
this was just pretty much an underground thing. And so it was just for, you know, the parties at the, you know, the socials at the, the, the dance schools and the practices and et cetera. Um, I hadn't been to a weekend uh, uh, intensive outside the city, um, you know, and et cetera, or a camp or anything. So the funny thing is, it took me going outside the country to find out from other people what was happening in my own uh, backyard, meaning yeah. a country. Yeah. So I went to, be, uh, to Harang and people said, do you know about Beantown Camp? And I said, <laughs> Bean, what? What's that? <laughs> uh, do you know about Swing Out New Hampshire? And then all of these other things. And it was like, and then I saw like flyers everywhere, just like you know we have here at ILAC. You find out what's happening in different uh, uh, cities around the, this country and then other places too. That was my, my experience. And literally it gave me a world, uh, world view. It, it, it charged me up. And when I came back, um, I had already, I was already working uh, with um, a, um, uh, teachers and dancers in my community and, 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 you know, and dabbing in it, but it wasn't really uh, something that, um, that had like a purpose yet for me and what I would do with it. It was just something that I, I really loved to do. I just loved to dance. I loved uh, what dance uh, does as far as bringing people together. And, um, and with Lindy, I've continued to do that. So when I came home uh, from Harang, um, I had already knew that I was going to use this experience and I was going to teach people for free, um, young people for free, uh, um, which I still do now six years later. So anyone that knows me, uh, I have some students here, uh, uh, Sharon, Julia, yep, Brandon, they know that they could tell any, any young person, you know, um, including college kids, um, you know, um, this college, you know, is you, you know, we're usually uh, strapped for funds, that they can come and study with me for free if they're serious. That's, that's and, awesome. uh, you know, so I've been, te you know, teaching, uh, um, you know, um, in the community um, consistently once a week. Um, I have an open community class in Harlem, and then uh, I uh, tell people, um, really encourage people to invite their family, family and friends, especially their children. Yeah. I don't care even if the, if the children can't even walk yet. Mm -hmm. Just bring them. <laughs> just let them just be in the environment, and it's, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, um, and just, to share, just to share this dance. Well, that's that's. I mean, speaking to the legacy and continuing Frankie's legacy, that's that's amazing, and that's what you know we'd like to see the ambassador program do, sort of giving back to the community. So I commend you for doing that, especially with the kids. That's my passion and heart as well. So great. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you haven't, uh, check out the juniors division on Sunday, yes. which is the highlight of every ILHC. Yes. Um, and we actually have uh, former juniors, current juniors. Former, 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 former he's like, I'm Sorry, 18. he's 18. <laughs> <laughs> well. Like, let me show you my ID. <laughs> and, and, and leaving for college September 1st. Oh my gosh. As a freshman. Oh my you gosh. got your so priorities right here first, yeah, and then right. college, right. yeah. Right, exactly. So <laughs> another competition just ended. So we have uh, three new guests that are joining the panel, which is wonderful. So first, I'd just like to everyone thank Sammy for being patient <laughs> and also being a wonderful representative of the Frankie Manning Foundation. But uh, our three new guests, I would love if you would just uh, maybe just go down the line and introduce yourselves, uh, tell folks where you are from, and maybe just a real quick intro of how you uh, came to discover Lindy Hop. Hello, my name is Ray F. Davis. I'm originally from Jamaica, but I grew up in Brooklyn and now live in the Bronx. Um, I truly discovered Lindy Hop because of Sam. Like I knew about it before that, but until I saw him at Ailey, and he was so excited about his experience that he had at Harang, and he told me to read Frankie Manning's book, it really didn't open up my eyes and I didn't start to connect the dots until he told me to you know, apply for this scholarship and until I actually, excuse me, ambassadorship, and until I actually got to Sweden, that's when I realized the magnitude of, you know, what was going on in Lindy Hop. Oh, oh, hello. Um, my name is uh, Shanna Maria Weaver. Um, I am also from New York. Um, 
the question was, how did I get involved in Lindy? First? How did you discover Lindy Hop? Oh, um, well, originally, um, I, I started as a musician. Um, I sing and play piano. I studied jazz in LA. Uh, I'm originally from California. So uh, my boyfriend is also a musician. He's a trombone player. So I convinced him uh, to move to New York to pursue music. I kind of did the Louis Armstrong's first wife kind of thing, like, you need to go to New York and do this. Forget all that. And so he went first, and then I came after, and originally was going for music. Um, and one day, he was playing with a big band in front of Macy's, and um, Milo uh, was dancing um, out there. And I was like, who's this guy, and what are they doing? And you only see this in movies. It was so amazing. So I took lessons with him, um, and then Judy reached out to Milo. She Judy Pritchett. Judy Pritchett. She uh, reached out to Milo because she saw me dancing at events with him, and or at his classes. And she asked me to uh, think about the Frankie Manning Foundation, and we did the whole big luncheon with Norma at Amy Ruth's. So I had seen all three of these guys. They were all in the found the ambassadors before I was. And I was like, what is happening? And I'd seen Sam dancing, and I was like, well, who is this guy who just walked out of like the 1930s <laughs> with a suitcase and his nice getup? And it was so amazing. I was like, if this is what this foundation is, and I, you know, I had only, I, I love MGM mu movies, so Gene Kelly and, and Fred Astaire were the, the movies that I was so in love with, with dancing. And then kind of being part of the foundation, talking to Sammy and to Brandon um, and, and Julia as well. They were all telling me about um, you know, Frankie Manning and, and watching the videos. And that's when I was like, oh, this is like hell's a poppin'. If you've ever seen me dance and perform, I perform with the Big Apple Lindy Hoppers with all three of these guys here. Um, and we do aerials. And the very first time I ever saw Hell's a Poppin', I was like, I am never doing that. <laughs> like, you're not throwing me like that and then flipping me and expecting me to just be able to stand. So that was a moment for me where I was like, I don't want to do this. But now I'm like, yeah, just throw me over your shoulder. It's fine. We'll do, we'll do it. But <laughs> just levitate me, levitate me in the air. It'll be fine. But it was such a, a wonderful experience. And... Uh, Judy was hounding me for two years to apply for this for the harangue scholarship So the first time she asked me to be an ambassador She was like apply for harangue and I missed the deadline kind of on purpose because I was like I I'm like just started and Lindy like I'm not gonna get this scholarship Nobody's gonna want me to go so as soon as I got in Big Apple and kept and finally applied again having the all this under my belt harangue was such a fascinating experience and to talk to these two about it, going like, how was your experience at Harang? It was just, you know, it, it was life changing. So I'm hoping it's down the line, like this should, you should be next. <laughs> like <laughs> naturally, right? Brandon's next, Brandon. Hi, my name is uh, Brandon Barker. I was born and raised in Harlem and uh, I am one of Samuel Coleman's apprentices, apprentices like these two, yeah. Um, so I, I got into Lindy Hop uh, because of Sam. Uh, he works at Alvin Ailey, and I, uh, I danced there for four years for my high school experience, which just ended. And so my freshman year of my high school uh, year, he invited me to his class in Harlem. And I was like, that sounds convenient, because I live in Harlem, so I can just take you know, two train stops up there. Um, and so I took like five classes and I, I really liked the movement and I was fascinated with the way I got to move my body. It was such a nice release from the ballet and the modern and the contemporary that I did Alvin Ailey. Um, and so it just made my body feel a different way, right? Um, and then he took me to my first social dances. One of them was at a, a club in uh, Manhattan named Spring 46. <coughs> Um, and there I saw, you know, people just going for it and having a blast and I saw swing dance in its uh, social dance form and that made me fall in love with it as well as um, another place called Frim Frim Jam, mm. um, which was super gross <laughs> and sweaty, but I didn't Wonder care. Who having <laughs> so much fun. Thank you for the plug. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great DJ, by the way. Oh, yes, you. he is. Oh, yeah. Credit, credit, credit to you, you for just, being just an awesome like, DJ. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you run for print. print. Perfect. <laughs> credit to you. I'll pay you later. It's fine. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, just slip me the 20 later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, once I found out the full magnitude of swing dance in its social form, 
I really latched on to it and I wanted to expand my search of where Lindy was. So from there, you know, I learned about Beantown and here I LHC, seeing in New Hampshire. And um, I remember Frankie 100, uh, I went there with Sam in 2014. And that was just like mind bogglingly insane. You had people <laughs> all over the world, you know, with different styles, you know, everyone embracing their own, you know, uh, swing attitudes. So that was just uh, very amazing for me. Um, and I guess that's where, you know, like Sam was talking about earlier, like on a global scale, what it's like. That's when I realized, you know, what it was like on a gl global scale. And, you know, these two different continents colliding with each other and came together for this dance. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I also met Shanna uh, two years ago. It was two years ago, right? It was two years ago, yeah. Uh, at the dinner with Norm Miller at Amy Roots. Oh. Well, uh, we that, met we met yeah. at at Swing Remix, um, but he doesn't remember because and and the reason why is because you were sixteen, right? Yeah, I was oh, gosh. Even so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like sixteen. I had just kind of started in the dance, and my friend, our friend, you guys all know Larissa. Um, she was like, "Oh, you have to dance with this kid. He's amazing." And so he was dancing with everybody, so I'm sure it was just another random person he was dancing with. So I danced with him, and I was like, what's your name? And he's like, Brandon. I was like, how old are you? He's like 16, and I just kind of walked away defeated. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I should probably not do this anymore. Throw it, in, throw it in the towel. Okay. Throw it in the towel. Yeah. Anyway, the point <laughs> is, Shanna has become like my swing dance Aww. sister, and Sam That's is nice like my, my swing brother. Yeah. And, and Ray is like my hip hop godfather. <laughs> okay. We have made a sort of uh, family. a family, <laughs> an Avenger style family. Swing pizza. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a, a question to the group, like um, anybody can answer, is, um, and we've asked this before of, of the previous members, but as far as Frankie's legacy, what does it mean to you? How are you carrying it on? Those type of things. Go, go Brandon. <laughs> um, for, for me, I kind of adopted uh, Sam's envisionment of, of Frankie's legacy, which was bring it to the black community, you know, and we already had phase one. We were in Harlem, so that was a, that was a big plus for us. Didn't have to go far. Yeah, yeah didn't okay. have to go across the country. <laughs> Walked out the door and there you go. Leave, <laughs> leave outside and you say, oh, what's up, Joe, and you're there. You're in Harlem. So... Um, you know, uh, f for me, uh, I've always tried to actively be involved in projects Sam is doing, whether it's for Summer Stage, which is this free event that's all across the boroughs of uh, New York. Uh, we did one, I think, in Brooklyn in 2015, you know, and he recruited these different kids from Ailey, you know, and um, I was like, I need to be part of this, you know, and, and show these other kids who, you know, are good dancers and are in the, this other art form, how they can transfer their ballet into this art form or how they can, you know, have fun with this and sort of not have the ballet posture and, you know, like they, they can be separate worlds and you can enjoy them, you know, separately. Um, you know, so um, also uh, I, I made a very, a big point of getting my friends who uh, were at Alvin Ailey in my four years of high school to know about Lindy Hop and what it is, you know, and yeah. uh, a big advantage I had was that I was good friends with the director of my uh, school division um, who worked at Ailey, so I just used that to my advantage um, a couple of times, and when there was no um, teacher teaching a class, I would go, hey, how about you get Sam to go teach swing dancing? Nice. And she, or he, uh, Mr. Oscar, he did that about I think three times for different groups of kids. I think spread out within the four years I was at high school, he, he managed to get Sam to go to different levels, or four levels, A, B, C, D. Um, I think he went to at least A, B, and C to teach swing dancing. Um, and so that I was really grateful for. And um, you know, to this day, like I remember at my prom, everyone was like, "Give me the Sheree George, man!" And I'd be like, "You got it!" And they'd be like, "All right!" Like they, they're like fascinated with it, and they can't get their knees right with it, you know. And they're like, "Only he can do it!" Like it's awesome. I want to be, I want to do that step, you know. So there, there's a fascination with it that they've, that they've grown, and I'm glad I can give them that fascination. And um, uh, I, I was lucky enough to. Um, 
help the kids for one of the Black History Month assemblies at my school uh, do like a Lindy Hop presentation. You know, I talked about the history in Frankie Manning, and I had like four of the girls come out and dance with me. You know, and they did solo movements. You know, and so the the word is out there. You know, they know what swing is. They know that world. You know, so if they ever went to go take Sam's class, which would be free for them, they wouldn't be like, "What's this? I need I need a second to adjust." You know, I kind of gave them the adjustment. Um, well, we gave them the adjustment. It was a group effort, me and Sam. Um, so, so yeah, I guess giving back to the black community, um, swing dancing, which has turned out well so far, and I'm going to start a swing dance group in Massachusetts at my school yeah. at UMass, University of Massachusetts Amherst. I put, a, I put a post on Facebook, and I just said, you know, here's the deal. Here's the stance. Here's a little bit of the history. Um, you know, I've been doing it for four years. You can trust me. I'll teach you the right things, I hope, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I sent them the video of the Frankie Mang Foundation doing the Beantown performance oh. this year. And I was like, just in case you guys are, like, skeptical of if I'm actually good or not at this, I'm going to give you, you a video. <laughs> I'm going to show you that I'm the real deal, Bam. you know. Bam, right there. So, and it's gotten, I think, 45 likes so far, and it's gotten, like, six comments of, this looks great, I want to do it, you know. So many different majors who aren't dancers are like, I want to do something that gives me stamina, gives me... Some cardio. That was probably the, the drop of my moment, suit and tie in our freaking mini. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but the word is, word is out there, you know. Um, and I had an idea to talk to the Black Student Union at my college and basically tell them that they should get the other black students involved in the swing dancing, you know. Because I, I couldn't just walk up to all of them one by one and be like, you need to do this. It's a priority for you, you know, that take too much work. And it's creepy. Um, so, yeah, so um, I think that is, that is it for me. I was like, literally drop the mic now. Thank you. Yes, and pass. Um, for me, I've been working for a company called Dancing <coughs> Classrooms for about 12 years. And the impact that jazz music and swing dance has on them at such an early age, because primarily in this program, it's nine and 10 year olds and it's in the public school system. Uh, when I was living in Brooklyn, that's where I taught. When I was living in Harlem, that's where I taught. They keep us in the borough. Oh. Um, we teach them you know, a bunch of different partner dances, but the way they light up once the jazz music comes on and they learn to actually do like you know the basic steps is amazing, so I think um, that's my donation, I am uh, given them that information at a young age, so when they get the chance to go to high school or go to college, they can remember that and say, okay, I know how to do this, this is familiar, and uh, they can take it from there. Um, what's really, really cool about this program is on lesson number 10, we show them a video, and on the video, it's like a three minute section that has Norma Miller and Frankie Manning talking. And I think it was like a special on PBS and they just took like three minutes from it. So they get to see uh, these two historic people in this historic dance. Um, and from there, they're super excited about what comes next. So for me, uh, I really enjoy the, the journey that these young ladies and gentlemen take. And once we get to an actual performance, they're super excited and their energy is like night and day from when they have to do, I don't know, a foxtrot to when I actually put on a swing. Yeah, so I think that's really cool. That is really cool. We, we are actually, we are running out of time. So I want to give you guys, I have a couple more questions that I think the both of us wanted to ask you about. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to have their final say. Um, so, and this might be a, a combination question, but um, Latasha was just in here and talking about um, the team that's performing at ILHC, and you're all part of that team, right? Yeah, three of you are on the part of that, a part of that team. So I, I'd love to hear about what that experience has been like for you guys. And um, the other thing that I think we would both, I think everybody would like to hear about is just, um, where do you uh, maybe see some of the future work, both as part of like you know the 
carrying on Frankie Manning's legacy as an ambassador or just as the dance scene, where do you maybe see or have hopes for that to, to continue? And those might be similar, similar answers. So whoever would like to jump I, in. I will jump in because sadly I'm not in the performance. But it's okay because I'm rooting in the background. I just had too much to do. But um, as in the scene, um, I, I've gotten to work with the three of these guys individually with like within the Frankie Manning Foundation stuff with the Boys and Girls Club, with the with you two, um, teaching in Brownsville with for uh, Wynton Marsalis Jazz Lincoln Center, and then Brandon and I kind of getting ready to do some Providence Swings stuff that we're gonna workshop. Um, but really, um, I also uh, get to work at like a historical place once a week um, at the Cotton Club. I'm one of the dancers, the sophisticated ladies, and one thing that I constantly bring up to um, the artistic director, uh, Dormisha Edwards, so if you don't know her, please look her up because she's fantastic. Um, but one of the things I constantly talk to her about is kind of like doing this uh, for kids and kind of doing like a sophisticated ladies boot camp or workshop where we get to teach you a little bit of what we do on stage and then let the kids kind of do it. Um, and she's totally all about that. And I feel like, you know, some, a place like the Cotton Club, you know, the Savoy Ballroom is no longer where it's at. Um, and having like the Cotton Club still up to kind of promote the history of what it was, um, even though it wasn't, you know, an integrated ballroom at first or an integrated club, um, we have so much history and we have so many dancers in New York um, and it's in the heart of Harlem. So it's one of those things where it's like, what can we do to get more people other than just the tourists to come, but more people to kind of appreciate what's going on in the dance because you walk in and there are photos all over the wall of the Cotton Club today and the Cotton Club when Cab Calloway and Duke Ellington were the, the band at the Cotton Club. So it was, it's something like that, you know, I, I work with these guys and I'm constantly like, can we do this? Can we try this? So <clears throat> sadly, the fact that I'm not in this performance, but what I, I get to, I sit every time they rehearse, I'm watching. And this, like, you guys have no idea, like, I'm like hyping it up, but you have no idea how amazing this entire routine and how hard they have worked um, just within the time frame, because a lot of people have just started working on this, like, <laughs> yesterday as a group. <laughs> and, and honestly, it does not look like they've just barely started to work on it. So if, you know, it's, it's tonight, we're all competing, right? I was like, I don't know what time the competition, I'm in another competition as well. Um, but it is phenomenal to see the process from visually from the audience point of view of being an ambassador but not being in it and watching and seeing, wow, you guys pick this up and it looks fantastic. So I mean, that I guess that's a segue to you guys of kind of answering those questions, but it looks great. Um. Yeah, uh, the three Bs, I love how it came together, you know, as just a thought, and then we saw a video. And since we're not all in the same place, we had to study that video. Um, I still haven't rehearsed with the whole group, so, you know, I'm going <laughs> to get a chance that. to do that <laughs> today. Lots of time, lots of time. <laughs> yeah, plenty of time, yeah, right? Hours. Don't yeah. Worry, don't worry. Um, but I think it's going to make a wonderful impact to see that we could all come together from wherever we are and make it happen. Yeah, you don't have to be in the same city, you don't have to be from the same place, but um, we have strength because we were able to come together. And uh, I look forward to rocking the stage with all these wonderful dancers. Okay, do you, do you want to go ahead? Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, Wait, yeah. was that you being like, we're out of time right there? We're almost out of time, but okay. Brandon, Brandon will have our final comments. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll... Make we'll, it great. Uh, Got it. it. Okay. Okay. Don't okay. let now us down. Now there's expectation on no this. No pressure, but phenomenal. pressure. Um, there's just been like a general feeling of, I think, excitement within the group, just to get it out there, get that idea out there, sort of plant the seed, and then, you know, um, kind of watch it flourish and grow from here, you know? Um, like for, for my school, when I go to my black student union and I'm like, hey, like I want some of the students to join, 
you know, like they have to see clips where people look like them, and this will be a, a clip where everyone looks like them. So you know, it'll it'll be pretty easy to convince them after this. You know, like for me, it's it's literally just what we're about to do, and like how's it popping, and like a couple other old school videos. Um, so yeah, that aspect of it excites me of planting the seed, watching it grow. Done. <laughs> Bam. I think that was a perfect ending. <laughs> I am looking forward to seeing this tonight. I am looking forward to. Me too. I am, of course. <laughs> I think we all are. I am looking. What time is it? Eight fifteen. Eight fifteen. Yes. So we will check that out. I am also looking forward to seeing all of the incredible work that you guys are doing as ambassadors. I am grateful for seeing that work because um, it's work that I can't necessarily do. So um, I thank you on behalf of the community. I know Tina also thanks you on behalf of the community for being here and for being here today and sharing your stories. And I want to encourage everybody to talk to these folks and uh, Joshua and um, Latasha who were here just a little while ago and talk about, I'm assuming you guys are welcome to talking about are open to talking about the Frankie Manning Foundation and the ambassadorship and all of these things and what it's meant to you. So um, I know that was a very brief uh, time with these guys, but it was amazing. So I would like to have everybody please thank this group of Frankie Manning ambassadors. Good job. Good job. Good job. For Brandon and Shanna and Ray and Sammy and Latasha and Joshua, thank you all for coming to this first LED talk of uh, ILHC 2017. I almost said 2015, which is <laughs> terrifying. Two, ILHC 2017. Um, we will ha be having another LED presentation at 3.30, 3.30, uh, which is a showing of the uh, Savoy King Chick Web documentary right here in this room, um, which is amazing. I actually haven't been able to see this movie yet, so I am thrilled to be able to go sit and watch. I'm going to go get some popcorn and... Uh, <laughs> We're going to go make some popcorn, and uh, we will see everybody back here for that later today. And then tomorrow, we have another two um, amazing LED talks. Um, Rob Moreland, who was just here and has now disappeared, is doing sound a lot this weekend, um, has a great presentation on uh, swing music and breaking that down. He's got a lot of uh, live recordings from musicians that are performing right here at ILHC this weekend. And he's going to talk about swing music. And then um, another panel that we have is going to be moderated by Naomi Uyama tomorrow. And it's going to be uh, the female legends of Lindy Hop. It's going to be Norma Miller and Jean Veloz and Sugar Sullivan all on the same panel. You won't want to miss that. So please tell your friends and family. Check out the schedule. And we will see you all at either the other LED Talks or the rest of the weekend. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>